But Paul, doesn't salt cause hypertension? No. In a healthy individual who is insulin sensitive, eating sodium does not cause high blood pressure. Though my body would rebel and tell me not to do this, I could eat 20 plus grams of sodium per day and not develop chronic hypertension. Would I have an increased blood volume for a day before my kidneys did something called natriuresis and got rid of that sodium? Yeah, my blood volume might be slightly high. I might actually have temporary hypertension if I eat a massive amount of sodium, but my body is going to tell me to get rid of it. It's not going to be pleasant to do that. And the kidneys will adjust. The kidneys will get rid of that excess sodium and my blood pressure will return to normal. So sodium itself is not the cause of high blood pressure. And in individuals who have insulin resistance, there will be excess resorption, excess holding on to sodium at the level of the kidney. So what can we do if we don't correct the root cause of hypertension, which is insulin resistance, we must get rid of the sodium. The problem is that sodium is critical for so many functions in the human body. We know that in individuals who are insulin resistant, who limit their sodium, they will have more orthostatic hypotension, meaning they get up, they get lightheaded, and they can fall over or black out. They will have more erectile dysfunction. They will have lower blood volume, lower energy. Low sodium diets are a nightmare for humans. It is no way to live as a human to be a low sodium individual. Limiting your sodium too much will cause you to feel miserable, cause all of the issues I've talked about, orthostatic hypotension, potentially erectile dysfunction, and you will activate your renin angiotensin aldosterone system. One of the things that system is primed to do is to conserve sodium if you don't get enough. <laughs> So the renin to aldosterone ratio is a critical thing you can look at in humans. If you limit your sodium too much, you will see aldosterone and renin rise because your body is trying to conserve the sodium. What is an ideal amount of sodium for humans? See what works for you. I would say that on a daily basis, I probably have six to eight grams of salt in my diet. I use a low microplastic sea salt. I'm very intentional about that, which translates to about three and a half or four grams of sodium per day. Sodium chloride is of course a salt, so half of the weight of the sodium chloride will be the sodium. That's what works for me. Ketogenic dieters often need more than that because remember that the actions of insulin at the level of the kidney are critical for the maintenance of proper electrolyte levels. I did a podcast previously where I talked about why I no longer think a ketogenic diet is ideal for humans, why I stopped a ketogenic diet in the past, and one of the things I talked about in that podcast was that a postprandial after eating spike in your insulin is a healthy, good thing. It affects hormones positively. It allows you to retain the sodium that you eat so your electrolytes can be balanced. When sodium becomes disordered, all of the electrolytes become disordered. Chloride, potassium, magnesium, it's a nightmare. People on ketogenic diets often must chase electrolytes round and round like a dog chasing its tail. Don't fear carbohydrates. I believe that fruit is the least toxic source of carbohydrates, but getting some carbohydrates in your meat-based diet will improve your electrolyte maintenance. And conversely, excess insulin in a state of hyperinsulinemia will lead to excess resorption of sodium. So if you have high blood pressure and you have hyperinsulinemia, if your fasting insulin is high, you're holding on to too much sodium. How do you fix that? You fix the insulin resistance. You fix the insulin resistance. What else does too much insulin do? It causes increased sympathetic tone. It causes that fight or flight nervous system to go up. It increases the production of angiotensin II. And it appears, and I'll speak about this at the end of the podcast, that in hypertensive individuals, angiotensin II may be increased independent of insulin as well. Hyperinsulinemia decreases the formation of nitric oxide through many of the second messenger cascades. Hyperinsulinemia also appears to raise LDL lower HDL, and raise triglycerides. Oh, now we're back to lipids. Yeah, it's all connected.